that we couldn't even see our way out or we look around in our in the world we see things happen that we can't even control that we have nothing to do with like that ran yesterday it poured yesterday it poured so rapidly in such a little while until i had some soil outside i had put on the lawn earlier during the morning and next thing you know i was i was standing in the garage door watching to see how much will come down and it came down so much until that soil disappeared amen i mean disappeared just like i had never put any there and it is someone bigger i i it was no one to blame amen sister gamble didn't do it she didn't take a hose uh nobody drove the car in it 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 happened there was no one to blame so it you know i just point to that someone bigger than us women thank you uh, brother black for playing that for me back today with part two part two we want to offer this little prayer let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable and i said oh lord my strength and redeemer look with me right back we're going back with part two today because it stirred me so much until I was sitting in the office and I, I called my wife and asked her a certain question. She said, well, that's what happens when you are involved. Yeah, it is. It's necessary that we are involved with the word of God because it raises so many questions that will help us search for so many answers. I'm sure, I'm sure today we are, we are back in it. And it also has a meaning for today. We, this not, this a day come and go. The day we call Easter, but not anymore from a theological point of view, we call it resurrection day, resurrection day. And it's not no one day. It's a continuous situation because we are, constantly in the dark in certain situations that we need to be resurrected from amen uh, you who are seeking and searching you'll find out that you need to be resurrected in so many areas of our life and that's what i found to be amen i don't care uh, how many books i read or how much school i go to and we should oh, of course you have to you have to start somewhere to get somewhere, amen. So we are grateful, we honor all of you. But anyway, I wanna talk from the context, the context of resurrection and the three words that I had introduced, uh, the implication, application and manifestation just stirred me to the core. I, I, this is the heart and soul of Christianity as far as relevant to us who we say we prescribe to follow in Christ. So sure. it, 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 it relates to the entire part, the all parts of our life. Yeah. But it's from a Christian point of view here, as far as our uh, context of uh, resurrection. And I think that's what we want to look into. Them three word application, application, and manifestation. They're huge. I, I didn't know these words were so big and had so much meaning to them. I, I, I love the big words because they has meaning to them. So many people push them aside and go on. No, no, these they has this implications of, uh, of uh, what we term as resurrection day. And it don't leave me alone. It continued to stir me as it did you. You, you know, before the end tradition, you know how we used to mess with a lot of eggs and mess with a lot of Easter bunnies and the different color eggs, stuff like that. Uh, I know when we was a kid, you know, that's what we look forward to, to Easter because 
for us as kids, you know, you look for eggs, a different color, and they hide them, and you go, and they would let the kids loose, and we look for the eggs, and everyone would find more eggs. They would always reward them with a little prize. And uh, I'm so thankful. I just want to talk to you in a practical way, in a pr practical and powerful way. Amen. Uh, from the Gospel of Matthew, this now, <clears throat> we this this is a different Matthew from he was before he was changed, because he write and, and, and list the uh, the dispensation of how the law end in this particular passage here. When Jesus died. It, it actually, it gives you and I hope. We understand that we had, uh, we had Good Friday, which wasn't always Good Friday. It actually was a blood, bloody Friday, but since Jesus died, it, it transformed that bloody Friday to Good Friday. And as we will look here closely at the word here, which is so, powerful and quick and sharper than a two-edged sword or any two-edged sword. It pierces and, and dividing the asunder of soul and spirit and joint and marrow. That's how powerful it is. It's not just another day at a park for me. It's, it is a discerner, discerner, of thoughts and intent of the heart. Come with me a little bit here. We know we don't have a lot of time, but if you would just give yourself over for a few minutes, and this is how we will receive from something we was hearing since we was a kid. So I know that it's just not another day to pass by because it has some type of an implication with us and, and the, an application to, and then it brings a manifestation along with it. Uh, let me just read these verse here into you here and start at the uh, 27 of Matthew. This is very impactful, it caught my attention and I couldn't get away from it. Uh, we understand uh, in the gospel of Jesus Christ here, we, we got uh, four writers right here. And, but Matthew, from his perspective here, it's the 21st verse here, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twins in two pieces from the top to the bottom and the earth did quake and the rocks split. Well, we K, the KJV said it rent. That's mean it's the rock split. Nobody hit the rock. It split. This is very impactful of you. Just join with me a few minutes, please. And it, another thing happened. The graves were open. And many bodies of the saints which slept arose. Now that's amazing. Uh, these are people that uh, had hopes and they had died, you know? And they said the, the grave opened. And it came and came out of the grave after his resurrection, after after Jesus was resurrected, and, and they went into the holy city, that's Jerusalem, yeah, and appeared unto many. Now when the centurion, and they that were with him, watching Jesus, saw the earth quake, and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, truly, this was the Son of God. And many women were there beholding afar, looking afar off, 
which followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, among which was Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joyce, and the mother of Zebedee children. It's amazing. When the evening was come, there came a rich man of Adam Mathia named Joseph, who also, who also himself was Jesus' disciples. He went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewed out in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulchre and departed. And there was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary sitting over against the sepulchre. Now the next day the fall, that followed the day of preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate. They went to Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that the deceiver said, they call him a deceiver. While he was yet alive, after three days, I will rise again. Command the Command, therefore, that the sepulchre be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people, he is risen from the dead. So the last error shall be worse than the first error. So policy, y'all better make sure. Make sure you secure everything real good. So... <clears throat> There is an implication of uh, the resurrection day. And it, it wasn't always resurrection day. Uh, Easter actually is like a paganism day. But actually, we as Christians, we learn better. It's not really Easter. We call it Easter, but I'm sure we all understand when we think of Easter, we think of Jesus' death and resurrection. Amen. So uh, we got a different spun on that. Back in Egypt, when the day was uh, the, not to be forgotten that the children of Israel was delivered from slavery out of the strong hands of Pharaoh, but the mighty hands of God and and they were told to keep this celebration focused, remembering uh, the time. But then now here come this point, uh, the disposition of the law ends and out of the resurrection of Jesus. And it opened the door for all of you that believe. Mm -hmm. uh, now the, imp the implication, implication is this, in case some of you may not really understand, get an understanding of what I'm talking about. Uh, the implication con con is conclusion that can be drawn from something, although it is not explicitly stated. See, everything is not written right out in words in the Bible. That's why we have to have faith if we prescribed to fallen Jesus, amen, which comes under the umbrella of uh, discernment, which give us the ability to, to perceive and understand and judge uh, things clearly, especially those that are not obvious or straightforward. And the application is that applying the Bible biblically, as far as sermonically or theocentrically thinking, applying the Bible in a, un in a unique way, deeply personal for each individual, amen, uh, no matter what level you on, amen, praise God. I pray and hope that we can follow through, this, submit yourself to the word. It is making a relevant truth, amen. I think uh, Minister, Jamil Black, he loved the truth. I love the truth too. All Christians love the truth. Yep. So it's making a relevant truth, a personal truth. In other words, you stand on it, but with scripture, you stand on it, an understanding of scripture 
by your implication and your application. You hear me? And involve developing a strategy of action. Mm -hmm. And then here come manifestation with your belief. Amen. You, you have to, your belief with scripture back up. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Okay, the manifestation of God, a appearance of the divine spirit, a Holy Spirit in a series of personage. Amen. So you will believe. See, God just don't leave you alone. Amen. He'll hit you more than once to assure you. Amen. Just like he did the, the patriarch in the Bible. He showed them things over and over in different ways to, for their faith to be secured. An example is Abraham. Show them things in different ways. Tell them, go out from your people to a place I'll show you. Did not tell them which place it was. They had to have faith involved. And as such, they perfectly reflect the attribute of the divine into the human world for the progress and advancement of human moral and civilization through the agency of that same spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Uh, and that manifestation. Uh, further explains that uh, it is something or uh, an event, action, or thing that is a sign that something exists or uh, is happening. Amen. Okay. The Britannical says that, that, this, that uh, uh, a sign that shows something clearly, usually, the forms that something has when it appears are occurred. Things that's happening, y'all, in the world. Something happened in the text here. Amen. According to what I read, it's a veil in the temple. Now you can't, you can't miss this. Amen. Well, they could miss this. Because according to what I was reading, it said, said look, said the veil in the temple was rent in two pieces from top to bottom, and the earth quaked, and the rock split. Amen. And not only that, amen, uh, I'm sure uh, uh, this word just didn't now up, just just now appeared. I mean, whatever language that they were living in, and whatever language they communicate in, it comes to this: the implication here, and the implication of these uh, uh, of the earth quaking and the uh, veil in the temple was rent, and the graves were opened. And many bodies of the saints which slept arose and, and came out the grave after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many. Who were they, Brother Gamble? Well, that's a good question. Amen. This text don't give the name, but because I said before the implication to see uh, the ability to see something that's not explicitly written or explained. And here we are with the minds of people way back then. Amen. They, they said, what the centurion and they that were with him watched Jesus and they saw the earthquake and those things that, that were done and they, they feared greatly. And they, to, to the point, until they had to admit that truly this was the son of God. Amen. So I don't, I, I don't know about you. I don't have to see everything with my eyes. Amen. According to 
uh, Hebrew 11, one, one, it said now faith. What is that? Left is it now faith is the substance of things come for an evidence of things not seen. Amen. I believe Abraham believed. All the patriots they believe. That's if you want to ask me a question, amen. I don't think no theologian can dispute this one through your faith, amen. Uh, your observation of this context. Application, application, manifestation. Yeah, you can even say the fact, amen, that no one can't dispute that it wasn't Moses, Abraham, them sense that sleep, they fall asleep believing God had the hand on them. Yeah, amen. God has that ability. I told you. He is, he is not just a God. He is the God. That's who he is. The God of salvation. The God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, all them that are going on before us. That's what I'm talking about. That kind of God. The same God that, that resurrected on the third day. That's the God I'm referring to. I told you, his word is so powerful, like a double-edged sword. He could speak and things come into existence. He speak when the earth was born and things start to happen. Never have I heard of such thing like this, except in the Bible, God's word. God is so powerful. Yeah. Uh, that's the God that I serve, the God that you prescribe to. Amen. Um, you could touch somebody and say, I want to know more about him. Yeah, I'm seeking him every day for my life. I want to know him. Yeah, yeah. You want to know him. Yeah. If you really mean it, you will see. You will ask. You will know. Amen. They give us access through these three words. Those are powerful, complementary words. They go together. If you, if you ask, seek, the words say A-S-K, mean ask, seek, and knock. These things will be done to you. Yeah. I could just see, amen, the things that will happen here. Even the people that, uh, the centurion, they were given orders. Amen. They were under this jurisdiction, under the orders from the higher up to crucify him. To crucify him. Uh, they did. But then they saw something. Uh, according to what I was reading here, down in the, uh, um, in the latter verse, he said, uh, and said, be careful that the sepulchre be made sure under the 64th uh, uh, verse. Said, said, make sure until the third day, unless the disciple will come by night uh, and then steal him away. And then when they will say to the people, he risen from the day. And they said, the last era shall be worse than the first era. Even them that crucified, they admit. That that was an error. But they didn't know it before they do it. They find out by the evidence. Yeah, Brother Black. They find the evidence. Cause, cause, because, cause, because nothing like this never happened before. I, I have never seen the night came at noonday. Night. Pitch black was a sign, and they all tremble. I mean, they tremble, the people, and so they conclude that should be careful unless you're gonna have you're gonna have an error that worse than the first one. That's to make sure it's secure. But let me tell you what you righteousness it crushes the earth. 
Martin Luther King's, but, but then it rises again. It may crush the earth, but it rises. Yeah. He said, except a grain of wheat. They, they didn't understand the fact that Jesus had told him to say, except a grain of wheat fall in the ground and die. It abide alone. So Jesus was referring to himself. I'm going to get up again. Because his father been with him. Amen. He was made sin for you and I. You and I. Can I give you another scenario? That's why it got so dark. Because he, become, he became sin for us. He wasn't sin. But the father turned his hair in. That's how sin is. Look, sin separates us. That's the only time in scripture where I see where the father was separate from the son. But that was momentarily, but it wasn't because of his fault. It's because that's how sin is. Sin separates you. But I come to tell you, what I'd rather say, on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the suffering of Emerald and Shem. Huh? I will cling to that rugged cross. I don't know about y'all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, the, the grave opened up and they seen it. The rock split and they seen it. And they seen it and they feared greatly. Feared the same people. Same people, they feared. And they said, no, no. We made a mistake. We made an error. We did. But God knew already what was going to happen. God knew. God had everything in scope. He had everything. I heard many of y'all say that God is in control. Well, that he in control. He in control. And, and what the devil do? Listen, you can come right back. I want to clarify that. You can come right back to Roman 8 and 28. Since you can climb and you can stand on the rock, on the mountain, in the valley, wherever you are. If you, if you are here, he could take you there. He could take you there. I don't care where you are. He could take you there. If you're down in the valley, he could take you there. Wherever you're there is, or whatever your here is, he could take you there. When they went looking for him, say, he, he's, he's, he's not there. He ain't there. So are you seeking the, are you seeking the uh, living among the dead? No, no. He is risen. See, this, this uh, is a great implication. It's just not one day for me. It's just not a day we put, got on the calendar for me. It's every day. Every day I'm being resurrected. If I submit myself in God's word, I don't want to stay at the same place I was. According to the context in uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, it's a therefore. What therefore? When you read in the scripture and look further, up, it'll tell you what therefore is there for. Since I know it. Since my confession, Hebrew, what is it, six and one said, therefore, leaving the principle of the doctrine, let us go on to perfection. Don't stay, oh, don't get stagnant. Don't ever be satisfied with where you are. I don't care how good it seems. Never be satisfied. Amen. A, 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 a satisfied man is as far as he's going to go. Ah, uh, somebody say, I'll take you there. I think the stable singer said, I'll take you there. I don't know what they're talking about, but I yank down on that. And I know that God will take me farther than I can go myself. He can supernaturally take me. Them same guys that received the order, I mean, to, to, to put him to death, they say, oh, no. See, no, no, no. See, we, we put many people to death, but I never seen nothing like, I never seen no, I never seen no rock split. I never seen the, the day got mixed up 
the night got mixed up with the day. The Bible says from six to the ninth hour he hung there. Darkness covered the earth. Darkness, which represents that something going wrong. Something going wrong. And I want to send a signal to y'all. All, all you devils, all you mischief, you devilish. I want to send a signal to you. That if you don't change your way, you'll never see the day again. Oh, that's revelation from God. But God is so merciful, even in my sin, when I went wrong, when I didn't do right. God sent his son, John 3 and 16. Say, who shall ever believe on his name shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God was merciful. Even in his chastisement, in his chastisement, he is merciful. Amen. Yeah, I see. Even when God chastises you, he don't whip you as hard as he can. And he just whip you hard enough for you to feel it and might change your mind. He could kill you if he want to. Amen. He could do that because he's mighty. He's almighty. He's strong. Amen. He can do what he wants whenever he wants. But his love for me is just like you go. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I can say it again. He loved me. This I know for the Bible tells me so. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm thanking God for this resurrection day. I'm thanking God for that implication and that application. And I thank him for the manifestation that comes from the implication, application, then manifestation. Amen. Have you seen God manifest himself in your life? In other words, the things I used to do, there is power in God's word. There's too much power that he'll restrain you. God, his love can conquer all things. Uh, anything that wrong, God can change it. Uh, the love of God changed hearts and minds. The way people think, you could see it in the word here. The sin to him, the people were given orders to crucify him. Even the people that was making cross in Jerusalem. Uh, you could hear the hammer ringing when someone get ready to be put to death, they would make make cross. Uh, amen. But the people that were making the cross, uh, when they looked up and see Jesus, and uh, how Jesus was looking at them, uh, they changed their mind. Uh, I'm paraphrasing. In other words, uh, I'm going uh, now from cross making. Uh, I'm going to cross bearing. Uh, didn't he do it with you? Uh, didn't we make cross uh, for people? Uh, didn't we make cross uh, for the church? Uh, didn't we make cross um, for our neighbor? Uh, but no more. Uh, I'm not making no more cross. Um, I'm going to bear your cross. Uh, a songwriter said, must Jesus bear the cross alone? Uh, and the world go free. Uh, where do I fit in at in this scheme? Uh, amen. Uh, let me say this to you. Uh, and I'm going to finish. Uh, no cross. Uh, no crown. Uh, let every man uh, must take up his cross um, and bear his cross uh, with the assistance uh, of the Holy Ghost. Uh, will give you power. Uh, you may be weak, uh, but thou is strong. Uh, he'll get you through. Uh, no matter how the hard the task uh, may be, God uh, is so powerful. Uh, glory to God. Uh, he can do stuff uh, that make you wonder. Uh, somebody said the wonder uh, working power uh, in the name of uh, the law. Read the rest of it. Ask God to show you the application, the, the implication, and manifest himself in your life. 
Somebody said he walked with me, he talked with me, and he tells me that I'm his own. And I come to that garden alone. And while the dew was still on the roses and the voice I heard were falling on my ear, the sons of God discloses. And he walked with me and he talked with me. God, will, I tell you, God will show you things. You live close enough to God, he'll show you things. He'll make you his friend. Not only that, he'll make you his son. Because John, uh, what did he say? One and three, he, three. He said, now are we the sons of God, and it do not yet appear what we shall be like. But one thing we know, when he appear, we shall be like him. We'll see him as it is. Amen. That's the way. I am his son. He made me who I am. He made you who you are. But by the grace of God, this from the context of the resurrection. Amen. From those three word application, application and manifestation. It's not finished. It's never finished. A sermon not ever finished. A continual, continuous process from glory to glory in our life. I want to continue to be resurrected. It always something I'm dead in. And may God bless you. Now, may the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit and when the resurrection, all that, may it just resurrect your life and bring you to a new level in him. God bless you. May we pray. Father, thank you for your word. Your word is so powerful. Is like a double-edged sword. We thank you for that now. Bless your people that we're able to hear your powerful word today. Touches on all level of our personality. Resurrect us in all the dead areas that we had. Oh God, do us like the vision said in Ezekiel. The dry bones, amen, had gained life, new life, new hope. Oh my God, and we bless your name today, your people that will hear your word. And put it in practice that the manifestation will take place. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't forget, you can help us continue to spread the good news by subscribing to our YouTube channel. It's PIBC, Pentecost Inspirational Baptist Church. Like, follow, share, and subscribe. Thank you for joining us. Have a blessed week.